Good morning, all. Um, welcome to the second day of the bumpy road to net zero, paths to carbon neutrality in uncertain times. I'm Kate Peterson from the Center for Ecosystem Science and Society and the McAllister Program on Community, Culture, and the Environment at Northern Arizona University. And I'm really pleased to introduce Regent Fred Duval from the Arizona Board of Regents today. After his welcome remarks, we'll have a short break and our, then our power purchase agreement panel will begin at 1015 Mountain Time, 915 Pacific. Regent Duval, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thanks for having me and uh, appreciated yesterday very much. It was a terrific opening day. Look forward to uh, today's conversations. You're gonna make me a better regent and I appreciate that. Um, and I wanna thank ECOS. I mean, I, as a regent, I couldn't be more proud of Northern Arizona University for envisioning this conference and hosting it uh, to Bruce Hungate and to George and Kate and the team. Uh, couldn't be more proud of your research and your leadership, obviously, in this space. Um, personally, let me begin. I, I am thrilled to see this conference happen. Um, I was on uh, Al Gore's negotiating team in uh, Kyoto uh, many years ago and on the in the cap and trade negotiations in, uh, on the Hill in 2011. I'm a soulmate in the cause. And as a regent here in Arizona, uh, I intend to lift and promote it as aggressively as I possibly can and intend to uh, urge regents and trustees, uh, public and private alike, around the country to do the same because it, it is clear to all of us that the crisis is now uh, real enough, it's broad enough, it's expensive enough, uh, and the solutions are really popular enough and compelling enough that we can move with uh, real energy. Uh, you know this, uh, you're in the right place at the right time. Um, and let me address that for a moment. U universities uniquely offer a, a number of attributes that make us the right leaders for this issue at this moment. At a time of public distrust of elected officials and distrust of the news media, truth and facts and science gets lost. Um, and that's the platform that we own. Secondly, our decision-making institutions are so utterly paralyzed by dogma and sort of dead-end ideology that objective truth is really the only way uh, that we can move forward. And it is uniquely our credential. Um, we're built for this. Uh, on the uh, mitigation side, we uniquely offer uh, the variety of transdisciplinary capacities across biology and chemistry and oceans and forestry and medicine and all the other disciplines to contribute uh, holistic, sustainable and su successful strategies. But as important on the adaptation side with the inevitable coming climate migration, uh, with the disparate climate impacts that will occur to people of color and poverty, we're also in the business of sociology and law, philosophy, and uh, perhaps most importantly, uh, the business of ethics. And we lead and are part of large institutions that must model good behavior. Uh, we have the credentials, the platform and the moral authority uh, to lead. And many of you already are. I mean, I recognize this from yesterday's panels and from my own reading that it's fabulous what, what's happening. Here in Arizona, uh, all three of our institutions are, are leading in different ways. Northern Arizona University is in its 10th year of its zero carbon action plan and its green fee. Uh, that the students adopted is being used for a wide variety of sustainability initiatives uh, around uh, clean water, recycling, uh, and a variety of other things. And the impact, obviously, of ECOS and the research platform at NAU was known around the world. Um, we heard from Nick yesterday, Arizona State University achieved carbon neutrality for scopes one and two last year, uh, is ranked first in the nation in the Times Higher Education University Impact Rankings. Um, and the University of Arizona uh, recently uh, negotiated with its local utility to source 100% of its power from renewable uh, resources starting next year, which is, I think, uh, if not the largest, one of the largest campus utility agreements uh, in North America. So we're making institutional progress here, but we don't have a system commitment. Uh, we lack, and I believe we need, uh, a system-wide metric and goal, we, we have a sort of an informal understanding of our commitment to climate and sustainability. Um, but I believe here in Arizona and in other states that lack it, uh, we need to become more explicit and more intentional. Uh, that's work I plan to lead here in Arizona and will soon be proposing 
uh, new metrics for our system around both uh, carbon uh, neutrality and sustainability best practices. Now I realize California and others, a lot of systems have moved, but not everyone has, but every university and every system should. Um, I recognize from the panels yesterday that the students are, you know, are the, the energy force behind uh, this leadership and the sustainability offices are leading them on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, I urge you to insist on top-down governing board leadership as well. Um, uh, as I said, I, you know, many publics and privates currently have enlightened board leadership, but not every system does. Regents and trustees have a unique kind of dual fiduciary duty, a duty both to the institution and to the public we serve. Obviously, that's more true on the public side. But we have a public that is demanding that we address uh, climate and carbon wherever and whenever we can. And the fact is that incoming students simply demand it. So addressing carbon aligns with both of the fiduciary imperatives that trustees and regents have. So specifically, what do I think that looks like? It, it means governing boards setting system net zero goals at exactly the same level of attention and importance as graduation rates and research expenditures and pushing those metrics and those uh, expectations into the public square and holding leadership accountable for them. That means a dashboard that enables annual public uh, progress reviews and even into presidential performance and comp packages. We need to create imperatives and incentives all the way through the institutions. And doing so, I hope, will give you, the leaders in this space, the runway and the institutional stature that you need to succeed. It will elevate your work, wherever you happen to be on the organizational chart, to the president's personal attention. It will embed your work in the recruiting, the student marketing and admissions components of campus. And that's a powerful tool because it moves this work from the cost side of the balance sheet to the revenue side. Um, and that will be proved to be important. The magnitude of this crisis requires a, a commensurate response. And so it is all hands on deck. Uh, students, uh, admissions officers, uh, faculty leadership, research, sustainability leadership, uh, and governing boards. Um, and so we're pledging to do our part here. And I, I certainly hope every other state does the same. And I want to thank all of you for uh, your leadership in this space, for the commitment that you exhibit and for the success uh, I know you will achieve and must achieve in order to save uh, the, the world and life as we know it. Thanks, Kate, again, for the opportunity to be with you. And I look forward to listening to today's panels. Thanks so much, Fred. We'll just take a short break um, and we'll reconvene at, at 10.15 um, with our Power Purchase Agreements panel. <laughs>